Welcome to the Fit Life Orange County, a show dedicated to busy men and women focused on taking back control of their fitness and their lives with the help from ideas and programs from local experts here in Orange County. Here are your hosts, Bryce Henson and Jake Stewart. Hey friends, welcome back to another amazing episode of the Fit Life Orange County. I am your host, Coach Bryce Henson, also owner of Fit Mighty Bootcamp, and I'm excited to have another solo episode for you today. Before I get into today's content, I want to give you a friendly reminder to give us a like and subscribe on YouTube and write some amazing review on iTunes. That way you can keep producing this content for you for free. So to get today, to get in today's episode and be able to provide you value from a content perspective, we're going to cover the six ways to recover your body. And yes, recovery is the name of the game. But before I actually dive into recovery, I do actually want to take a step back and showcase the value of working out because in a previous episode, I just was able, to, was able to provide some insight that the vast majority of Americans are not moving. Nearly 50% of our population is obese, which is a big problem with adding major complications to the healthcare system, um, you know, to the financial system, and uh, ultimately just no way to live. There's a lot of anxiety and mental health and depression that we're trying to really solve with this. Um, so really, uh, from a foundational perspective, you need to be working out. Uh, the vast majority of people need to be working out a little bit more. Really take care of yourself. Work out at least three times a week. Um, you know, put yourself into some rigorous exercise and challenge yourself, which is really, really important. And at FitBuddy Bootcamp, uh, we specialize in high-intensity interval training workouts, uh, which really there's three types of uh, workouts modalities. Uh, the first is what's called metabolic conditioning, or METCON for short, which really is, stands for, it's really just a cardio workout. So increases your cardiovascular output, which is really, really important for a long, healthy life. The second type of workout that we specialize is a strength workout. So you're building lean muscle mass, okay? Building resistant training, which actually makes you more toned. It increases your metabolism. You're able to burn more calories at a steady state far after the workout. And really, that's called, in scientific terms, um, EPOC, which stands for Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption, which is a little bit of a mouthful, okay, uh, from a professional, I guess, uh, coaching uh, element. In the layman's term, we call that the afterburn effect. So when you work strength training and you build lean resistance or lean muscle through resistance training, you're actually breaking down your muscle, you're building that up uh, more denser, and then really what happens is you look lean, you look toned, and you burn more calories at a steady state, okay? The third aspect or third modality of workout is a classic workout, and it's really a blend of both. It's a blend of both metabolic conditioning, or cardio for short, and then strength training, which is really, really important. Um, to really develop uh, your high level of fitness. And again, uh, just to be able to provide some clarity, when you're actually working out, you're not getting stronger. You're actually doing the opposite. You're breaking down muscle fibers. You're breaking those fibers down so that way they're be uh, better set up to go ahead and rebuild leaner, tighter, denser. And again, that's what makes you look toned. That's what, look, what makes you look defined. And that's what makes you burn more calories at a state, steady state far after your workout. So I want to start there because working out and high intensity interval training is so important. So, uh, literally, I'm a product of my product. I've been um, doing boot camp workouts for the last, probably going on since 2009, even before we opened our location. Uh, it's been you know, game changing towards my life, towards my business success. Uh, so really important and really want to start there. Now, that all said, if you are in the camp that is taking care of yourself, working out at least three times a week, the fact of the matter is recovery is so important. So I'm here to share six strategies on, and tips uh, for recovery that I practice that have been really, really fundamental into my fitness success. So we're going to basically give you a high, high level overview and then dive into those six uh, recommendations. So number one, sleep and rest. Okay, that is the essence of recovery. Number two, cryotherapy or cold plunge treatment. Number three, meditation. Number four, active recovery. Number five, massage. And then number six, hydration. So uh, from a sleeping resting, which is number one, uh, pretty straightforward here. But interestingly enough, there's a lot of science showing the less sleep you have, the more gain or the more weight you will gain. Again, the less sleep you'll have, the more gain, weight you'll gain, if I can say that correctly. And that is just the truth. And um, for this one, and you know this to be true, okay, you need to be sleeping seven to eight hours a night. That is so, so mission critical for your success, for your recovery, especially when you're working out. This allows you to you know, recover, build back those lean muscle fibers, and it really gets you alert, uh, looking lean and toned. But more so, 
there's studies and uh, showing that, again, um, if you're not sleeping enough, you're actually going to overeat and you're going to gain more weight. So for this bullet point number one, I pulled out some research for us so that way I can provide some data point. Uh, in 2019, the meta-analysis of 41 studies calculated that when people significantly restricted their sleep by sleeping just four to five hours a night instead of seven to eight hours a night, which is recommended, they consumed on average an extra 250 calories per day. And here's the good news uh, from a University of Chicago study recently showed how quote unquote easy it can be to turn this around. So the scientists at University of Chicago, what they looked at what would happen when 40 people were getting less than six and a half hours of sleep per night, got some coaching on the value of sleeping. The results were eye-opening, pun intended. So on average, the participants slept for 1.2 hours more per night than uh, for the previous two weeks, which is the length of the study. And then every hour of sleep was associated with 162 fewer daily calories consumed. So if you put that another way, the participants cut more than 1,000 calories per week from their diet simply by sleeping just over one hour a night more, okay? That's meaningful, uh, meaningful uh, progress. And literally, it requires very little intentional eating coaching. It literally just has to be do with being disciplined enough to go to bed at a good time so you can get up at a good time. And that's really a big uh, talking point as well. Don't lie to yourself. Don't kid yourself. You're going to wake up at a certain time. But if you don't go to bed at a certain time, it's going to be exponentially harder for you actually to wake up. So set yourself up for success. Get into bed early. Um, the last bullet point I want to hear from the University of Chicago, Chicago study really answer the question, why does sleeping... Um, help you more, uh, excuse me, why does sleeping more help you eat less was the question. So for starters, the lack of sleep negatively impacts hunger, appetite, and satiety hormones, which can lead to an increased level of food craving. So when you're basically malnourished from a sleep perspective, you have more cravings, you have a bigger appetite, okay, and you don't feel as full. Number two, there's also more an opportunity to act in those cravings. So if you're getting, let's say, five hours of sleep at night versus eight hours of sleep uh, at night, that's an extra three hours you have basically awake that you potentially could be overeating. So that's the second point there that the uh, researchers studied. And then number three, just as important, a bad night's rest can negatively impact your outlook, your mood, your emotions, your relationships, your decision-making ability, and your capacity to manage stress. So my friends, as you can see, that's one study from the University of Chicago, but it just reinforces the point. If you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to eat less, okay, you need to be able to sleep. That's what your body's way of re restoring, recovering, and you're well on your way to a leaner frame, assuming you can do it. What's up, my friend? Coach Price here. Now, you might know me as the co-host of this podcast and the owner of Mission Viejo Fit Body. But what many people don't know is that I began my journey as a fitness transformation story. You see, circuit training and nutrition coaching absolutely changed my life after being overweight with a diet of mainly fast food in my late teens. Now, upon my fitness transformation in early 2007, yes, I gained a much better physique as I was overweight and lacked lean muscle. But way more than burning fat and building lean muscle, I increase my confidence, my energy, and my vibrancy to live life. And it's for these reasons that many people join our boot camp. In fact, with our Ultimate Transformation Program, we guarantee that you will lose at least 15 pounds in 12 weeks, or your program is free until you do. Now go ahead and visit our website at missionviejofitbody.com. Now thanks, and back to the show. Recovery recommendation number two, cryotherapy or cold plunges, which honestly is probably my second favorite because my first favorite is getting enough sleep at night, which yes, I run my body hard, but I'm religious and really militant about my sleep, but I'm also militant about getting a good cold plunge after my workout. So this one takes a little time to work warm up to, but it's really important. Now, if you haven't heard of cold, uh, cold treatment or cryotherapy, you have, but maybe not in the un unconventional way. Um, here are a few benefits that uh, subjecting yourself to cryotherapy will help you. Number one, it increases your immune system's response. So who doesn't want an increased level of immune system? Number two, it increases blood flow in your metabolism. So literally your metabolism, metabolism, metabolism will fire at all cylinders or a higher level, um, assuming that you can do uh, subject yourself to some cold tra treatment. It also decreases inflammation in your body, which inflammation is a very, very big concern, especially as we age. 
And then number four, it activates your sympathetic nervous system. Your, your sympathetic nervous system is responsible for fight or flight. And if it's always wired, it's always fired up, that's not a good thing. So what it does is actually relaxes and calms that down uh, by suggesting subjecting yourself to cold treatment. And there's a few ways you can do this. Um, if you're like me and you have a pool in your backyard, and yes, we live in Orange County, yes, it's beautiful weather, but yes, we know that uh, the mornings are very frigid, especially in the winter time now. Um, so that pool is a balmy 45 degrees. So after a Fit Body Bootcamp circuit in the morning, um, I jump in the pool for about two minutes. I do some breath work exercises. It is not fun. Yes, it hurts. Yes, there's a level of pain that involved. However, when I get out of that pool, I feel like a million bucks. I feel my immune system, my metabolism firing, uh, my endorphins are going. And um, honestly, it's just so good for the body. And you know this to be true. Um, if you, you know, sprain an ankle or your knee, what do you do? You put an ice pack on that to reduce inflammation, to increase your nervous system. So people have known this for a very long time, um, our humans, I should say, that cold treatment has a lot of benefit uh, uh, benefits. It's a matter of actually practicing it. So uh, number one, you could jump in a, a cold pool. Number two, there's a lot of cryotherapy uh, centers here in Orange County. I highly recommend that you check one of those two out. At the very least, the other strategy could be um, just when you hop in the shower, and uh, you can gradually work up to this, but basically put on some cool water for the first 30 to 60 seconds, work up to it. Um, that's another strategy that will give you all the benefits and more. So that is action step and recommendation number two. Recommendation number three is to meditate. And candidly, there's a few ways to meditate. In the traditional sense, uh, your coach Bryce here isn't overly uh, strong. However, there's a few ways you can meditate. Number one, by running. Uh, it basically allows you to clear your mind, that bilateral stimulation. Uh, it's really, really important and impactful from a meditation perspective. We provide mental clarity, which is a benefit of meditating. Uh, number two, another recommendation could be stretching or yoga. Uh, and again, um, yoga is actually included in my, my next uh, rec uh, recovery recommendation. Uh, but from a stretching and yoga perspective, from a meditation perspective, I should say, um, you know, having a nice flow, cool, calm, and collected uh, is really good for your mind, your body, and your soul. And then lastly, is something that I consider meditation work, which I've been doing for the last probably since, let me take this back, about 2021 is when I started. Um, I have a 15 minute commute to work, uh, to our headquarters office in Chino Hills. And uh, I drive in the car uh, without any music, without any audible on the way in the morning. And it just kind of allows me to decompress. It allows me to kind of be in touch with my thoughts. Uh, so driving uh, silently in the car for about 15 minutes every morning is a form of meditation, which I practice. So those are some recommendations or some strategies that you can look into to help with your meditation game, which will help with your recovery game. Uh, number four is active recovery. Oh, active rest. So these are examples, pretty straightforward, short and sweet here, but going on a hike. We have beautiful places, beautiful hiking grounds here in Orange County. So go on a hike. Uh, similar, you can go on a long walk as well. Okay, that is active recovery. Uh, taking a slow bike ride. And then also, you know, as I indicated from the meditation perspective, but a stretching and yoga, um, a diff uh, probably a little bit more high intensity uh, of stretching and yoga because there's different you know, flows and meditations. Uh, so that also is really important. And um, you definitely should not be doing rigorous training uh, boot camp sessions seven days a week. There's no way your body needs recovery for sure. But at least one, if not two days a week, you should plan an active recovery like hiking, walking, slow bike rides, stretching and yoga, as I just articulated and laid out. Really good for your long-term health, also flexibility, and also reduces uh, inflammation and reduces your risk for injury. All right, we've cranked through number four here. Number five is getting a full body massage. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, receiving sports massages for a long time now um, because I run my body hard. This is really important. And it actually breaks down the muscle fiber when I get a massage, uh, which is really, really good for long-term, you know, health. Uh, it also reduces inflammation. And again, it also reduces, um, uh, uh, or I, I should say, it limits the risk of injury, which is really important. Now, there's a new modality, or at least new to me, called a shatsu, uh, which stands, uh, the A stands for feet. And really, it's a modality specifically um, to help with pain, poor posture, anxiety, joint problems, depression, the list goes on. Um, and uh, there is a dear friend uh, who, uh, actually a new friend who's a dear friend of uh, Tatiana, who does her Spartan trainings here in Orange County. Her name's Erin. I'm going to have her on the podcast. Uh, just started uh, getting treatment with her, and it's been an absolute game changer. In fact, the first time I did a, a, a Shih Tzu massage, 
with Aaron, I told Tatiana that literally is a 10 out of 10. Uh, so regardless if it's a Shih Tzu or any other type of sports uh, types of massage, make sure to get a massage. I highly recommend at least once a month, especially if you're participating in active exercise like boot camp at least three times a week. All right, friends, that all in mind, that's number five. Number six to finish us home is hydration. As you can see, if you're watching this on video, I have my water bottle here. Um, hydration is so important. It does a few different things to help you with recovery. Number one, it increases satiety, meaning it makes you feel full. In fact, many times people overeat not because they're actually hungry, they're thirsty and they're dehydrated. So by increasing your hydration, it will reduce the amount of uh, food volume you eat, which will also not only from a recovery perspective, but from a fitness and fat loss perspective, really, really benefit you. Um, it's also going to make you look and feel great. Let's face it, your skin, okay, is your biggest organ on your body. And when you're hydrated, um, your skin looks more vibrant, which is really important. So stay hydrated for that. And then lastly, it helps your body recover. Your body is mainly made up of, uh, of water cells. Uh, so it's important to replenish those cells, replenish hydration. Uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You're going to act better. You're going to perform better. And you're really going to recover better. So that way, when you're in your circuit training, so when you're doing your boot camp sessions, um, you can actually work harder uh, and build lean, more, build lean more lean muscle mass, which again, will make you look more, more toned, will increase uh, your level of fitness, and it'll allow you to burn way more calories at a steady state far after you're working out. So make sure you get hydrated. So my friends, that is the six ways to recover. Hopefully you got a ton of value. They've been literally game changers for me and my fitness in my life. And I want to take a few minutes to really impart those wisdom and that recommendation for you so you can do the same. So hopefully you got a ton of value, assuming you did. Give us a like, give us a subscribe on YouTube, but more importantly, share this episode with someone in need. Our goal here, our mission with the show is to inspire fitness and change lives every day here in our local community in Orange County, and you've been doing that. We thank you so much in advance. So that's all for today. We'll see you in the next episode.